Okay, so uh, we have started. We have uh, talked about memories, and we have talked about different types of memories, like uh, the first generation memory, the second generation memory, uh, the post memory. Everything we have talked about. And today I will give you certain example regarding the memories. Okay. So first of all, uh, I will uh, just introduce you to this website. This is a good website, Sriti Ruttaradhikar or Inherited Memory, the third generation members of Bengal partition. So I told you earlier that partition memoirs, if you think, if you think the partition memories, what is existing at the present time, you can say that almost 70 years have passed. And if we take 30 years duration for a generation, then almost two and a half generations have passed. So therefore, you people, or rather uh, even uh, the people of my age will listen to uh, the stories or listen to the experiences of partition from their parents but unluckily their parents will also be the second generation experience holder because uh, when the partition happened during 1947 they were juvenile seven or eight years old or somewhere ten years old maximum but they will have a brief shadow of the partition experience in their childhood memories which will be guided by the constructive memories of their parents and uh, their parents that means your or my grandparents those who have seen the time of those two decades, the 40s and the 50s, they can give you practically the perfect experience of what happened in those times. And uh, even do you, uh, if you remember, in last day I had uh, told you about one essay by Borenduda, who is in Jadupur now, Bengali department. Uh, the essay is called Partition Chahitto Amra Kibhabe Porbo. That is how we should look at partition literature. There he is clearly defining uh, or dividing the partition experience into two categories. The first category is the direct experiences of the things those were happening or rather direct narratives of their experiences in hand experience rather that is which were narrated or written during the 40s and the 50s just when the struggle was happening that is uh, like like people uh, experience. okay just hand in hand experience from that time written by the writers of those decades and another experience narrative we can find the second generation writers are writing or even those who were the first generation memory holders they are writing after 30 or 40 years clearly contemplating over what happened thinking over the good and bad effects of that and then forming a memory according to their own vision of the event the same thing can be found in partition memories. The same person, the way he or she had seen or experienced or realized the thing in the late 40s or the 50s or the 60s, in the 70s or 80s, when he or she will recapitulate the thing, her point of view, her realization, of the whole thing may change like let me give you a small example during that time i had told you 
in in the morning session i had already told you i was telling that when the people started coming there was a very different structure in bengal regarding the communal status you know i i told you one very interesting thing that those who lived they lived for the people of the other community and those who died they died for the people of the other community the thing is that those muslim who could escape from this side of the border to that side they could escape because of the hindu neighbors and they were killed because of the hindus and those hindus who could escape from that side to this side they could escape because they had good muslim neighbors and if a large number of them were killed they were killed because of the muslim soldiers so the thing is that you have to see you have to understand the whole scenario had two different layers there was the political layer that was very vehement very pathetic and very uh, i'll say the harsh and uh, bloody on the other hand in another layer there was the communal relationship or rather not the communal but the personal relationship between the hindus and the muslims which were very cordial they cried for each other you know sunanda guho uh, there is an essay in one book uh, deshbhag shri tritiyo shatar ananto vibhajan that is that is the name and there sunanda shikdar is continuously saying that when in the childhood the hindu people used to leave their village the muslim neighbors would cry the muslim neighbors would cry okay another thing i would like you to uh, watch a movie named mati okay just watch the movie from youtube or from internet or download it from torrent wherever it is watch the movie mati there you will find what happens after 70 years of partition okay the muslims in the village now regret in bangladesh that they had thrust away their hindu neighbors here in kolkata the hindus regret that they had so good muslim neighbors but they had to leave they regret what their forefathers had done during that time in both the countries the situation is very much same but on the other hand if we judge the hand in hand experience of that time we can say that it was really a very coarse experience for the people who cross border in either side you know only if we think about the hindus who came from this uh, that side to this side the th situation will not be clear to you all those uh, muslims who went from this side to that were called malaun malaun means hindu bhasha those who were connected to the hindus and they were not accepted literally in the mainstream society of bangladesh or rather east pakistan in that time the same thing happened with the hindus those who came from that side they were not thrust out i say that hindus or even every one of us we consider guest as someone who cannot be thrust away they were not welcomed either they were looked down upon the situation was same in either side of the border the situation was same okay here they were called bangal and there they were called malaun the situation was same and why would not that have been so many people are coming the resources are limited the economy is in a crash and suddenly uh, the families are seeing that 13 or 14 members are cross bordering and coming and suddenly the uh, family had to procure food for them and it was not easy to manage a job or manage income just coming from at that place i know because 
uh, my family suffered in that way you know uh, my uh, my grandfathers they were three brothers the other two brothers they had settled 10 years earlier and they had built the hair houses and they had properties but when my uncle came uh, or sorry when my grandfather came uh, with uh, his wife and four children they suddenly were a burden upon them and they had to suffer you know and so much was the suffering even the brothers could not or the brothers the blood brothers were not willing to take the responsibility of the elder brother and his family for a certain period of time until or unless he man or till he manages a job no they were uh, even i i have i have heard from i have listened from my Takuma, I have heard the same story from my J2 Baba that they were treated as uh, rather household excesses. You know, I would rather say household maids. My 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 granny had to do the works that the maids used to do in the household because to feed them they had to uh, rather cut down the expense for the maid. So this type of the things happened, you know, during that time and. If this could happen with uh, within the blood brothers, what will happen with the other distant relatives? You can understand. But still, uh, the thing was that one thing that my parents or uh, my uncles still say that one good thing was that we were not driven away of the house. Practically, uh, one reason was working that it will be a humiliation for the family. But on the other hand, this happened to more or less everywhere, that they were looked down upon, they were insulted, they were taken as pardon, they were not taken as one of them. And instead of all this, they were not thrashed up. Even if anything, anything was given to them or anything they could give, they were able to do so only because they were being helped. Although it was an, uh, I would say in most of the cases, not uh, uh, the help was not being done from heart or not being done as thinking you one of theirs, but rather it was a show off of sympathy. But somehow the sympathy was there. One, well, the Bangals cannot ignore that they could settle here because these people, the Goti Boli, the Gotis, practically uh, did not thrash them away. Or somehow they helped within their limits or to show off sympathy or even to show that, look, we have property. Look, we are better than you. You will depend on our leftovers. But in spite of that, they helped them. They thrived. The Bangals thrived, the Koti thrived. And there is a kind of dialectics between the Bangal and Koti, a kind of uh, clash between the people, a social distance between the people. There were times when uh, the Kotis would not marry the Bangals, the Bangals would not marry the Kotis. This type of things happened, you know, during partition. And these, these are the thing you must know. While you read Bengal partition stories, there are different layers, you know. There are different layers. You can understand, you cannot say that uh, Bangal Ghoti is always a problem. No. There is a, there are two sides in the same coin, you know. In one hand, they were looking down upon each other. They were treating them as uh, us enemies. On the other hand, they were enjoying it. Both of them, they knew that they had to live like this. They have come from that side, being thrashed by the people of the other community. Will we leave them to die again? No, even we do not do that with our pets. So these type of sympathies were working. You cannot just say that there were no sympathies. 
On the other hand, a very different thing happened during the next 20 years, you know. The different thing is that while the Ghotis or the people leaving at this side, you know, you can see one, uh, let me, let me uh, just interfere in between the discussion and just mention a brief thing that there are several cultural differences between these people also. You can see there are those who are Bengali here in the class, you can understand that there are differences in culinary, there are differences in dress, there are differences in language, there are differences in the way or uh, the manners of rituals. Okay. And obviously there are differences even in preference for food. Like someone likes to eat chingri. Someone likes to eat some sweeter dishes. So these are the different these are the differences you can understand. And uh, for the Bhutis, those living here, you know, the basic difference was in one single game that was football. The, for the Gotis, it was Mohun Bagan. And for the Bangals, those who came from that side, they established a new class, uh, sorry, the new, uh, new club named East Bengal. You know, uh, West Bengal and the other side was called East Bengal. So they came from East Bengal. And that's why they, 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 they made a club. It was called East Bengal. And generally, even till that, you can see that in Facebook or in social media, these two football clubs attack each other in the name of Bangal and Goti, Chingri and Dilish. But you would know, you know, say, sir, 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 that is the class enmity I am speaking about. But on the other hand, both of them cherish football. If you look at the club statistics, when any of the club clubs go to play outside the state and the other is not qualified, both the both the, all the supporters of both the club will wholeheartedly support, even if it is their again uh, opponent club. You know. They cherish, they cherish the enmity, they love to maintain the enmity and on the other hand, on the other hand, they will only shout, you know, that's a very different thing, very interesting thing, a very, there is a very interesting texture in that enmity, the enmity is not a physical enmity, it's a vocal enmity much more. But you know, that is the thing. That is the thing. Like the competition between two boys in a class who are equally meritorious. It ultimately helps in progress of each of them. A healthy competition. Because they have known, they have realized that although there is a class enemy, although there is a sense of distance, although one cannot just uh, like the another or one cannot behave like the another, still they coexist. And East Bengal exists because Mohan Bagan exists. Mohan Bagan is not charmy when East Bengal is not charming. You know, like India Pakistan match. So the India Pakistan, one of the country not have to bring India Pakistan and the Shira Jinista So you can understand this. Okay, uh, okay uh, are you being able to listen to me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So this is the thing. This is the texture of this enmity. Okay, uh, leave it here. There is still the cultural differences, but after th 70 years, these are fading. Why these are fading, I will speak to you because that will become important when we read Alam's own house. Okay, so let me uh, tell you because uh, next we will read final solution. I will go to the basics uh, of how the economical condition uh, rather uh, decided the fate of these people.
the thing was that you know at the very beginning it was not accepted by the central government that in west bengal any kind of permanent solution was needed you know because uh, practically it was seen that uh, or uh, the nehru government decided although they had said that they will take the liability of each and every one who will be migrating due to this partition uh, happenings but uh, Uh, the reality was that they decided to focus only on punjab border because atrocities were much more there in bengal i had said that uh, the atrocities were not much more because you know not like uh, not like punjab not that much pathetic like punjab because he was a muslim were uh, staying here together for uh, for a long time and they were enjoying a very cordial cultural relationship because of people like rubinath or people like vidya sagar uh they were preaching uh, for uh, global humanity so bengal had a kind of very uh, you know radical or rather very uh, secular ambience so punjab border ke je bhabe eta effect korechilo it did not affect uh, bengal in that coarse manner although i i i, I cannot say that it was negligible but punjab was pathetic you know in that sense if you say that punjab was 100 you can say bengal was uh, 40 or 30 okay but that 40 or 30 percent is not a matter of joke in case of number lakhs and lakhs it counts to more than lakhs and lakhs of people who died who got raped uh, who were looted Uh, who had to leave their land behind and had to migrate miles after miles uh, it amounts more than 10 lakhs even if it is 40% of so uh the very next thing i want to say is that uh, ultimately after four and five years when or rather uh, during the 50s you know what happened uh, let me tell you in the 43 or 5 43 to 47 you can say on the rich people uh, they inch their profit even until 50 or until the noakali riots uh, the poor people didn't think that they had to migrate from one place to another uh, in both sides of the border you know the poorer people who were uh very much dependent on uh jobs of labor or they were agricultural laborers uh they didn't think that they had migrated because uh they thought that they had nothing to do with the religious or political situation uh, of the country they were just commoners and they had no involvement in it but in the 50s you know when noakali raw took place and then something happened in bihar also uh, suddenly uh, the situation got worse and people were thrust out in the name of religion and during that time the poor people started migrating and obviously uh, the shidil caste and shidil tribe people also they started migrating you know at that time after the 51 uh, or rather uh, after the period between 49 to 51 when bengal so uh, saw a worst kind of riot the mass movement started happening and after that the government felt the pressure of population although uh, i would say that uh, only if you uh, think about the total migration from both sides of the border you will find that 75% happened from that side to this side and only 25% happened from this side to that side. so uh, you can understand that muslims uh, were somehow feeling secure in secular structure of the indian constitution so many of them decided to leave uh, here and uh, do not just uh, migrate to bangladesh you can understand there are so many muslim populations in uh, kolkata and was the other parts of west bengal and bihar uh, they didn't choose to just migrate to the other side because india had a secular structure of the government whereas at that time east pakistan was uh, literally uh, it was uh, it had announced itself to be 
a homeland for the Muslim people only. So that means that the, all the Hindus who are coming from that part, or most of the Hindus, 90% of the Hindus, they migrated. And the pressure was very much here on this section of West Bengal. And the government then thought that these people could not be engaged or these people could not be uh, allowed to mingle in the society because that will practically make the situation worse. Uh, the food, jobs, places for staying, it will uh, be very problematic. And therefore, they decided to open camps at different places, like Cooper's camp, like Vodrogali camp, like there were so many in Bangladesh. Uh, sorry, there were so many in uh, Bardwan, and then, 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 then there was in Ashan Sol, uh, somewhere in Purulia, somewhere in Bushkirhat. Uh, in Kolkata, there were several camps. In South Chubbish Varmana, uh, there are several. So uh, these camps were built. And people were kept there like animals, you know. Uh, like uh, you have seen dormitories, but it was worse plastic bit dormitories. Uh, and their families uh, had to leave or stay just upon a plastic sheet. And uh, one plastic sheet was allotted for a family. Upon them, they had to leave, they had to do everything. One single toilet for all the men, one single toilet for all the women. And you can understand how pathetic it was. It was full of uh, diseases, it was full of infections. People were dying of malnutrition because uh, they were given food which was not very much nutritious at all. And these people, many of them were middle class people, educated people, you know. But uh, school teachers, uh, government clerks, uh, and also there were so many laborer class, but uh, there were also the low middle class people uh, who would have done humble jobs in the villages, but now uh, they had to migrate. There were so many educated people. Uh, even you have to you have to understand that uh, uh, sometimes uh, the lower middle class people were educated, but uh, they had to stay in the camps, you know, and those middle class who, who just could not bring with them anything. Those, even some of the upper class people who, who were just looted, uh, who could not bring uh, anything with them, they had to leave in those camps, in those situations. You can understand what was going upon them, what, what they were going through. Uh, these camps are often compared with the Holocaust of Hitler, the gas chambers of Hitler, you know, uh, where people were kept, the Nazis uh, kept uh, the. Uh, Israelites people uh, the, and uh, just used to kill them, you know, with gas. And here people were pathetic. Here in the Bengali, uh, Bengal partition camps or refugee camps, uh, the condition was very pathetic. And so what happened, you know, people uh, behind the eyes of the administration, uh, they started escaping the camps. On the other hand, it happened that people did not choose to come to Kolkata or come to the parts of Bengal from any formal route, you know. They would cross the borders through jungles, they would cross the borders through open areas uh, without or um, uh, just escaping from the eyes of the administration of the police uh, or the border security force. And they would mingle in the society. They would mingle in the society. And uh, as a result, the population increased. And you know, at that time, there were no identity or no voter card, or it was rather easy to make them. People would not care who had come from where. You know, and uh, uh, it was just a country in the beginning. And so many settlements uh, were made. And even some of them fled the camps, although the government tried uh, to pressurize the people to stay in the camp. Uh, they had met the camps in uh, Dondo Karongo. Then uh, they, they transferred the people there. There are still the refugee colonies in Dondo Karongo. You can see uh, if you search the net. Then the, 
there was some more chappy massacre if you want to refer to it or if you want to think about it just uh, read the hungry tide by amitabh ghosh or uh, modhumoy pal has a very nice book titled more chappy you can you can just uh, go for that and you will understand what happened with the camp people and that's why a large part of them chose to escape the camp and leave and mingle within the people of the society and it happens so that the statistics are showing that these people these people initially were ready to do anything and you know in a toxic or be economical situation often it is uh, very hard very difficult for the men to manage a job already there were so many refugees labor was excess even they could not get the job of laborers because laborers were excess people were roaming on the road for a job they would they would do anything for a bit of money or for a, a, a lunch or for a meal they would do anything so it was really hard for men to get a job but they had to move they had to leave they had to anyhow run their life and because they were uprooted the psychology of the refugees practically the common psychology was that they needed to do something for their future generation and when the men were not being able to do anything the women came out some of them managed if they were educated they managed to do some private tuitions uh there are shelai janto shelai school uh some of them got some good job in some private offices or government offices those who were educated those who were uh, from the middle class educated uh, portion of the society but think about the lower class people the under educated society and who were also sort of resourceful most of them were drawn to prostitute they had to because their men were not able to manage a job but they did it only because they wanted to secure a good future for their son and daughters and you know these people bari bari kaaj koreche era they had done the works of maids in houses they had done the works of uh, prostitutes they had done other things but one thing they confirmed that their children will go to the school and will get educated because they knew that they had nothing they had literally nothing only a piece of simple for uh, or a plastic sheet in many cases and the confirm that their children would go to school and get educated and you know luckily at that time the government schools were uh, not uh, very much uh, running in such a pathetic condition like it runs now it is and therefore they were educated well they were educated, given free education obviously in government school it was always free and obviously for uh, if they were uh, from the refugee camps if they could manage the refugee certificate uh, in those times one thing the government did the west bengal government did was free education for the refugees so in the next 20 years it is being found that most of the government jobs and mostly the women the most of the government jobs were secured by the refugee people you know because uh, they were very much working hard because they needed uh, or they they knew that they needed to do something for their family and they taught their children and they ultimately established their children and you can see in jadavpur areas in santoshpur in goria in other in boshirhat in bardwan so many places where the refugee people started leaving now many of them or rather most of them 
are either established servicemen or established businessmen because you know they they were so hard working and now you can say then oh, was the people living at this part of the land they didn't do anything you know what happened uh, practically those who came from that side they were very hard working you know they knew how life could just play a trick with them at one moment their rich or middle class status could just drop down and make them a beggar that's the sense of insecurity was there which ultimately haunted them you know to to make a secure or to procure a secure place for them in the society whereas the the people living in these parts they already had houses lands properties and in most of the cases they chose not to engage themselves with services they were doing business they were uh, doing uh, exchanging properties they were uh, they were thriving on that and therefore the statistic says in next 20 years 60% of the government and private jobs services i am speaking about the services salaried services were secured by the people from the refugee family you know it was ultimately you can see that it was a response towards or uh, it was a response against the negligence or uh, insults they had received they knew that uh, in order to uh, stop being called refugees in order to stop being called desh bhikari in order to stop being called udvastu they needed to improve their socio economic status and as a result you know whenever i i, I just uh, didn't mention one thing uh, i i told you about these people that they avoided living in the camps but whenever they avoided living in the camps uh, they mingled in the society but they always stayed in a group sokale bolechilam eta like onno community lokera jemon ekshonge group pe the thake minority community lokera these bangals were also minority you know and uh, that's why they chose to stay together and in the colonies they opened their school the first priority in the colony was equal share of ration equal share of land equal share of water equal share of resources and obviously two things one training schools for skill based jobs and primary and secondary schools you know and each and every colony tried to bring with them some of the educated refugees like there were school teachers and masters who had to become a refugee and these camps used to find you know these colonies these colonies used to find these people and bring them in their colony so that a school can be established and the people were educated people were trained for skills you know and uh, this is how ultimately both the bangals and the gotis thrived together and now after 70 years when we see that both of them the bangals and gotis they have the bangals were already socially established and the gotis have secured a, a rather uh, very uh, commendable position in the society now we can find that uh, the relationship of enmity is fading away you know only apart from certain mentions about uh, the dishes the cookings uh, and a few uh, like enmity in the field of football in case of mohan bagan and his bengal they now work together they now marry each other they now become families each and everything is being a uh, done in a very safe and secure way okay so these things are happening and uh, now it is you really cannot find that there is any social difference between between any 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 uh, sorry
between any uh, thing. Okay, just give me one minute. Okay, hello, you can listen to me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can listen to me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, so, uh, whatever I have said, have you understood what, uh, how, how the things happen between the two, uh, uh, the, the people of that, uh, uh, people from that part and people from this part? How, it, how, uh, how the chemistry developed between the two people? Yes, sir. 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 Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so now let us listen to some of the narratives, okay, by these people. First, uh, a very interesting uh, narrative by Shomnath Rudropal. Uh, he is uh, a commercially artist, you know. So let us listen to his narrative a bit. I will not play the whole thing, it's almost 23 minutes, <laughs> but I will play a brief part from it okay then you will understand how the thing happened okay let us listen to this okay are you being able to listen to the sound yes sir okay just listen to this Okay, let us all watch this. Baba ढाकापुर তো সেখান থেকে এবারে কলকাতার কুমোরটুলিতে আসার যাত্রাটা যদি আমাদের একটু বলেন যাত্রা বলতে অ্যাকচুয়াল আমরা তো সেগুলো কিছু জানি না যতটুকু যা করেছেন দাদুরা এবং আমরা সেরকম ভাবে কিছু শুনিওনি যেটুকু জানি যে দেশভাগের সময় তারা এসেছিল এবং ওইখানে আর্থিক অবস্থা খুব একটা ভালো ছিল না বলে যেহেতু কুমোরটুলি বলে তখন একটা নাম শুনেছিল যার জন্য তারা ওখান থেকে এখানে চলে আসেন মানে এই মিছিল করবে বলে ওখান থেকে এখানে চলে আসেন আচ্ছা এই যে দেশভাগের জন্য ওখান থেকে ওনারা ওনাদের ব্যবসা ছেড়ে এখানে চলে এলেন তো সেই পরিস্থিতিতে তাই আমি আপনাকে জিজ্ঞেস করছি দেশভাগ জিনিসটা সম্বন্ধে আপনার কি মনে হয় আজকে দেশভাগ জিনিসটা সম্বন্ধে মনে হয় বলতে দেখুন বাংলাদেশ এবং এই দেশ যদি বলেন এখানে এসে আমরা অনেক এখানে এসে আমরা অনেক কিছু মানে আর কি শিখেছি এবং যেরকম ধরুন এখানে এসে আমাদের অনেক হেনস্থাও হতে হয়েছে জায়গায় 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 আমাদের হেনস্থাও হতে হয়েছে তো একটা সময় দেশভাগ বলতে মানে এখন সেটা স্পষ্ট বোঝা যায় যে বাঙাল এবং ঘটি বলে মানে এমনি তো বুঝতে বোঝা যায় না যেহেতু আমরা এই কাজের সঙ্গে যুক্ত এবং নাম যতক্ষণ না প্রকাশ হবে ততক্ষণ বলবে না কেউ বাঙালার ঘটি কারণ আমাদের কথাবার্তা এবং এখনকার কথাবার্তা সব এক 
আমরা বাংলা ভাষায় কথা বলি না কারণ আমরা জানি না আমরা তখন যেটুকু বাবা ঠাকুরদা যেটুকু আলোচনা করেছে তারপর থেকে আমাদের জেনারেশনরা কেউ বাংলা ভাষায় বলতে পারে না ঠিক মতো আচ্ছা আপনি বলছিলেন যে এখানে এসে প্রথম দিকে আপনাদেরকে খুব হেনস্থা হতে হয়েছে সেই হেনস্থার উদাহরণগুলো যদি আমাদের সাথে একটু বলেন কি ধরনের হেনস্থা হেনস্থা বলতে ওই ধরুন অনেক রকম ভাবে হ্যারাসমেন্ট করতো কাজের দিক থেকে তারপরে বাঙাল বলে অনেক মানে ঘেরা ঘৃণার চোখে দেখতো ঠিক আছে তারপরে এইসব দিনের পর দিন হতে হতে একটা সময় এমন হয়েছিল থানা পুলিশও হতে হয়েছিল পুলিশকে জানাতে হয় তারপরে তারা এসে আবার মানে আর কি করে সেগুলোকে মিউজিক্যাল করে আচ্ছা থানা পুলিশের ঘটনাটা যদি আরেকটু বিস্তারিত কিছু বলেন যে কি কি কারণে থানা পুলিশকে জড়িয়ে এই ধরনের মানে বাঙাল ঘটির মধ্যে এই ধরনের তিক্ততা চলে আসছে এটা কাজের উপর এটা হচ্ছে মেন অ্যাকচুয়াল এখানকার যে ধরনের কাজ হতো এখানকার যে সব মৃৎশিল্পীরা ছিলেন ম্যাক্সিমাম হচ্ছে সব কৃষ্ণনগর নদীয়ার স্ট্রিপ এইসব তারা এখানে আসতেন এখানে এসে দীর্ঘদিন তারা কাজ করতেন না তারা ওই একটা সময় আসতেন কিছুদিন কাজ করতেন আবার চলে যেতেন মানে পুজোটা কে হলো তারা আবার সব ঘুরতে দোকানপাট বন্ধ করে চলে যেতেন কিন্তু যখন আমার বাপ ঠাকুরদা বলুন এই আমরা যে বাঙালরা যে কজন আছি যখন এখানে এসছি আসার পর তারা যখন স্থায়ী হলো তাদের মানে কাজের ধরনটা পুরো অন্যরকম এবং তারা ডিউটি দিত মোটামুটি দিন মানে ধরুন সকাল থেকে আরম্ভ করে রাত অবধি তো এইগুলো দেখেই তার তাদের মধ্যে একটা হিংসা চলে আসে তারা বিভিন্ন রকমভাবে আস্তে আস্তে আমাদের হেনস্থা করতে থাকে আমি <laughs> once we listen to someone who had a skillful job and now we listen to someone who is from academia বাড়ি হচ্ছে সুন্দরবনের পাথরবতী মাত্রে এবং যে পুলিশ স্টেশনটা হচ্ছে বারোখানা দ্বীপ নিয়ে গঠিত এবং সুন্দরবনে এটা যেটা ইউনিক ফিচার সেটা হচ্ছে ভারতবর্ষ মধ্যে ভারতবর্ষের পাশ মানে ভারতবর্ষের মধ্যে যে যে সুন্দরবনটা আছে সেটার মধ্যে বারোখানা আইল্যান্ডে এই পুলিশ স্টেশনটা এছাড়া আর কোনো পুলিশ স্টেশন কিন্তু বারোখানা আইল্যান্ড নিয়ে নেই হ্যাঁ বেসিক্যালি মানে আমরা যে বাঙাল বা বা আমরা যে ওপার থেকে এসছি এই গানটা হতে হতে আমাদের আমার বেশি গেলে অনেক সময় লেগেছে সেটা আমরা আমি অন্তত জানতে পারিনি আপাতত উচ্চ মাধ্যমিক দেওয়া বা গ্রাজুয়েশনের আগে সেটা আমি জান ছোট যখন খুব ছোটোবেলা ছিলাম ছোটোবেলাতে যখন স্কুলে যেতাম যখন অন্য কোনো কমিটির সঙ্গে একটু মেলামেশা করতাম সেখানে শুনতাম বাংলার নামে খুব ডিসক্রিমিনেশন মানে আমরা বাঙাল মানে আদা কোনো কমিটিতে মানে বসবাস করছি আমাদের চিন্তাধারাগুলো আমাদের উন্নয়নের চিন্তাধারাগুলো আমাদের সংস্কৃতি আমাদের খাদ্যাভ্যাস পুরোটাই ডিফারেন্ট এবং যখন স্কুলে যেতাম অনেক টিটকারি শুনতাম কষ্ট লাগতো মনে ভীষণ কষ্ট লাগতো বাঙাল বলা হতো আমরা পড়াশোনা হতো এগিয়ে দিচ্ছি মানে এত ভালো নয় মানসিকভাবে খুব উত্তেজিত এবং যেহেতু আমরা একটা আইল্যান্ডের খুব একটা ছোট্ট একটা মৌজাতে বসবাস করি মানে প্রশাসনিক স্তরের যে মৌজা সে একটা ছোট্ট একটা মানে মোজাতে আমরা দলবদ্ধ হয়ে বসবাস করি সুতরাং সেই কারণে আমরা মানে জনসংখ্যার দিক থেকে ওই আইল্যান্ডে খুব কম সংখ্যক সেদিক থেকে আমরা মানে অর্থনৈতিক দিক থেকে যেমনি তেমনি সংস্কৃতির দিক থেকে পুরোটাই পিছিয়ে ছিলাম সেটা যখন আস্তে 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 বড় হই এবং যখন আমার এম ফিল এর ডিজার্টেশন পেপার যার জন্য আমি ফিল্ডারকে যাই সেই ফিল্ডারের ক্ষেত্রে আমি যেটা জানতে পারি যে আমার ওই মোজাটাকে নিয়ে আমি ফিল্ডারকে এথনোগ্রাফিক্যাল কাজটা শুরু করি সেখানে আমি তো টোটাল ওই 
রিফিউজি যাকে বলা হচ্ছে যে আমরা আদব রিফিউজি কিনা বা আমরা কিভাবে পথে পেয়ে এসেছি বা বাবা বা ঠাকুরদা বা মা বাবার ইতিহাসটা কি তাদের এখানকার পরিবেশটা কেমন ছিল তারা যখন ওপার বাংলা থেকে আসেই পারে সেই পরিবেশটা কেমন ছিল কেন ওদেরকে আসতল ওরা কি ইচ্ছে করে এসেছিল নিজের দেশ ছেড়ে নিজের ফেটে মাটি ছেড়ে নিজের গ্রাম ছেড়ে বন্ধু বান্ধব আত্মীয় স্বজন নাকি কোন একটা ক্ষমতা কোন একটা ক্ষমতা বলই নাকি কোন একটা কমিউনিটি কোন একটা ধার্মিক বলই এইসব ঘটনাগুলো মানে বাধ্য করেছিল ওদের এখানে আসতে এই প্রশ্নগুলো আমার কাছে ভীষণভাবে মাথা চাড়া দেয় এবং এটা দেখতে যখন স্থানীয় কিছু মানুষ যারা রয়েছেন যাদেরকে সরকার রিফিউজি হিসেবে উদ্বাস্তু হিসেবে যাদেরকে পরিচয় দেয় যদি এখানে একটা অনেক বড় পলিটিক্স রয়েছে সে মানে কাউকে রিফিউজি হিসেবে আই কার্ড দেওয়া হয়েছে আইডেন্টি কার্ড কিন্তু সেই এলাকাটা আবার কিন্তু গভর্নমেন্টের ম্যাপে কিন্তু সেটা রিফিউজি এলাকা বলে নেই আমি একজন একজন ইন্টারভিউ নিলাম জীবন তিনি বলেছিলেন আমাকে যে উনি উনার সাত বছর বয়সে উনি এ পাশে ভারতবর্ষে আসেন এবং কিভাবে আসেন কেন আসছেন সেখানে একটা ধার্মিক ব্যাপার ছিল সেই ধর্মীয় যে কমিটি স্টোরি এটা সেটা হচ্ছে এরকম যে যারা চট্টগ্রাম এবং এবং বরিশাল এই দুটো অঞ্চলে বেশি মানুষ আমাদের ওই মজাটা আসে বসাস করে চট্টগ্রামের মানুষ যারা একটু শহর লাগা ছিল তারা একটু অর্থনৈতিক দিক থেকে একটু স্বনির্ভর ছিল থাকার ফলে তারা তারা কি হচ্ছে তারা সেখানে বিভিন্ন ব্যবসার সঙ্গে যুক্ত ছিল এবং ওরা একটা দলবদ্ধভাবে ওখানে বসাস করতো মুসলিম মানুষ এবং হিন্দু মানুষ একরকমভাবে বসাস করতো সেক্ষেত্রে কি হয়েছে খুব আগে যদি ধরে নি ওই উনিশশো বারো তেরো চোদ্দ পনেরো এই সময়ে যারা আপার ক্লাস হিন্দু মানুষ ছিল তারা কিন্তু যারা লোয়ার ক্লাস মানে একদম লোয়ার মুসলিম যারা একদম যাদের অর্থনৈতিক অবস্থা খুবই খারাপ যারা একদম শ্রমিক তাদেরকে অচ্ছুত মানে এইভাবে তারা দেখত তাদের বাড়িতে শ্রমিক হিসেবে কাজ করত এবং বাড়িতে কাজ করলে তাদেরকে বাইরে খাওয়া দিত দেওয়া হতো কলা পাতা কেটে এবং বাড়ির যে মহিলা ভদ্রমিলা ছিলেন তিনি ওই কলা পাতা যখন সরিয়ে রাখতেন তাকে আবার পুরো মানে স্নান করে আসতে হতো ঘর ঢুকতে হতো বা কখনো তুলসির জল বা গোবর জল দেওয়া হতো এটা হতে হতে আস্তে আস্তে মুসলিমদের মনে একটা ক্ষোভ আসে তার পরবর্তী সময়ে যেটা ওনার কাছ থেকে শুনি আমি উনিশশো ছেচল্লিশ সাতচল্লিশ আটচল্লিশ এই সময়টাতে যখন বাংলাদেশের রাজত শুরু হয় যদিও ওই অঞ্চলে যদি একটু আপার ক্লাস বসবাস করতো হিন্দু মানুষ তাই ওখানে সরাসরি আসতে পারেনি নিম্নবিত্ত যারা হিন্দু মানুষ ছিল সেখানে এই ঘটনাটা চরম ভাবে দেখা যায় আস্তে আস্তে মুসলিমরা একটা ওই যে তাদের জমানো ক্ষোভ তাদের প্রতি যে লাঞ্ছনাটা যে তুচ্ছ তার ছিল এই ক্ষোভটাকে ওরা বহিপ্রকাশ একটা পর্যায়ে নিয়ে আসে এবার বিভিন্ন রকম সেখানে পলিটিক্স রয়েছে তাদের বক্তব্য যেটা শুনেছি বিহার থেকে অনেক মুসলিমকে নিয়ে যাওয়া হয়েছে ওখানে অনেক গল্প করা হয়েছে যে এখানে সমস্ত মুসলিমদেরকে কেটে ফেলা হচ্ছে নদীর জল লাল করে দেওয়া হচ্ছে মুসলিম রক্তে সুতরাং ইন্ডিয়া মানে ভারতবর্ষ থেকে মানে ভারতবর্ষ তখন যদি ভাগ হয়নি বিহার এসব অঞ্চল থেকে প্রচুর মুসলিম গিয়ে আস্তে আস্তে হিন্দুর প্রতি একটা অত্যাচার শুরু হয় এবং এই অত্যাচারটা তিনি কারণ আছে বলে মনে করেন কি কারণ প্রথমে যেভাবে ওনাকে ওনাদের মানে মুসলিমদেরকে নিম্ন মুসলিম যারা আসছিলেন তাদেরকে যেভাবে তুচ্ছতা ছিল করা হয়েছে তার বহিপ্রকাশ বলে উনি মনে করছেন এটা এবং এটাকে উনি দায়ী করছেন তৎকালীন যারা আপার ক্লাস হিন্দু মানুষ ছিলেন ব্রাহ্মণ বা এই ধরনের জমিদার এই ধরনের মানুষ তারা কিন্তু তিনি দায়ী করছেন তো এবার চলে প্রচন্ড লেভেলের একটা একটা রায়ত চলে এবং কাউকে কোনো বাড়ি থেকে রাতে বেলা মহিলাকে তুলে নিয়ে যাওয়া হচ্ছে হিন্দু মহিলাকে বা কাউকে কোনো স্কুল দিয়ে যাচ্ছে হিন্দু ছেলে তাকে তুলে নিয়ে চলে যাচ্ছে মুসলিমরা এভাবে তারা অত্যাচার শুরু করে প্রথমতে তারা কোনো একটা দিন থাকতে না পেরে বাড়ি ছেড়ে তার চলে আসতে বাধ্য করে তারা এই কথা বলে যে আমরা বেঁচে আছি সেটা মুসলিমের জন্য এবং যা ক্ষতি হয়েছে সেটাও মুসলিমের জন্য কেমন এই গপ্পটা এই গপ্পটা এরকম যে বলে কিছু কিছু মুসলিম মানুষ ছিল যে এত ভালো সম্পর্ক যে এটা মুসলিম না হিন্দু না কি আমি আমার আমি জানতাম না নিজের ভাই বা নিজের বাবা বা নিজের 
একদম রক্তের সম্পর্ক বলে মনে করতাম সেই ক্ষেত্রে যে খুব বিপদের ক্ষেত্রে যখন দেখা যাচ্ছে ওই দিক থেকে রায়তে আসছে মুসলিম কমিটি মানুষ এই মানে হিন্দু কমিটিকে আক্রমণ করতে আসছে তখন হয়তো কোনো মুসলিম মানুষ তাকে তাদেরকে রক্ষা করেছে তাদেরকে নিরাপত্তা দিয়েছে সুতরাং এরকম বহুল গল্প আছে সুতরাং আমি Okay. Uh, giving importance to this bengal sector because uh, i take the assignments of uh, bengal partition text okay i will be uh, teaching you the two short stories alam's own house and final solution and after that i will be teaching you shadow lines in all these cases bengal partition or the discussion regarding it will be the major factor okay and one thing i will uh, one thing i will uh, just uh, want to show you you know uh, the things that uh, just uh, in this partition repository shokale shobai ke ami password id diyechi login korte pareche shobai hello are उसमे जाओगे जाके वो आई डी और पासवर्ड देखे मेरा नाम लेके घुस जाओ अंदर ठीक है तो वहां पे तुमको ये सारा टैब मिलेगा ये मेमोरियल्स लिटरेचर हिस्ट्री पीडीएफ बुक्स अबाउट द बॉर्डर अबाउट लेक्चर वीडियोस एंड इफ यू इवन डू नॉट डू एनीथिंग जस्ट गो एंड लिसन टू दिस लेक्चर्स यू नो स्पेशली द मोस्ट इंपोर्टेंट वन इज दिस वन बाय देवेश राय इट इज जस्ट इट्स टेकिंग टाइम बिकॉज़ माय इंटरनेट इज ऑलरेडी स्लो टुडे Uh, if I'm running on mobile internet, my Wi-Fi has stopped working. Just uh, give me a minute. A minute. Yeah, the videos are appearing. Just listen to this, especially this one by Devesh Rai. You know, this man died a few years ago. Uh, he was a chaim, and then there was another called Topudir Bhattacharya. <laughs> खूब राजनैतिक it's a request and you will just uh, uh, you listen to these videos for practical experiences from uh, the common people and if you want to know how the intellectual things about partition just listen to these lectures lectures from different people of different colleges different professors different writers okay omar mitro uh, omar mitro is a famous short story writer on partition and please do not miss the one by this one number 6 tapodhir bhattacharya okay so listen to this nondinidi nondinidi is a must name so do this do this okay so uh, i think it will be very helpful but uh, you have to do it within 7 days because my subscription is only valid for 7 days okay i had taken a 7 day subscription for you people so just listen to this uh go to the website for central of language translation and then uh, just take your notes if you need any okay 
सर नहीं डाउनलोड नहीं कर सकते बेटा ये आर्काइव ये पेमेंट वाला आर्काइव है सो यू यू कैन नॉट जस्ट डाउनलोड फ्रॉम देयर यू कैन सी एंड वॉच इन योर स्क्रीन एंड देन कॉपी इट इन योर एक्सरसाइज बुक ओके ओके सर ओके थैंक यू uh but this one is the best one you know and that's why i have subscribed it for you people just i have subscribed to the morning before uh, beginning of the class so that you can have the full seven day in your hand okay so till 8th of september you can do this uh take it as a teachers day gift from my side okay I have, okay, sir. I have subscribed it for you people thank you sir and just just do it uh, nothing thank to you, thank me you know this is a duty as thank a teacher you, there is nothing nothing to thank me just use the password and the id go to this website and you take all the materials whatever you need okay my password and id will be valid for the next 7 days till uh, 8th uh, of september morning so just whatever you need to do you do this in between okay so these yes, were sir. the background sure, sure. this this was the background that uh, i i i i thought i needed to tell you before beginning the text in uh, text of partition short story so in the next class obviously we will begin with the final solution or in bengali that the story by manik bondopadhyay was called upay you know upay means the means the final solution okay so this is the story uh, of a woman is the story of a woman so when we will study we will also study from a gender point of view yeah aunty bhai i know it's a garun text uh, really it's a very very interesting text so we will be reading the text from the next class so i hope sokale jeta kora jayni seta ekhon make over hoyeche are you people satisfied with whatever has been done in the class yes okay yes yes now open your uh, open yes, your sir. video and uh, let me take a screen okay before that, before that one thing sir video nahi on hoga net nahi chal raha acha se acha theek hai theek hai to the ye on rakh ab mujhko thoda ek kaam karne de mujhko thoda attendance le lene de anyone do not leave now okay let me take the attendance yeah the attendance has been taken okay so we are all here and let me now take a screenshot jara jara video on korte parbe ekta kore felde ki ara bhalo ekta photo niye ni okay yeah good to see you all hey baap re chalo स्टप करी पढ़े समय